Recording in progress. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we need one more person, correcto? Yep. Rod's coming in right now. Yep, I see him. And Jennifer's here. Yay. Hi. I got 28 minutes before we're gonna, we're gonna rock on this revision. Yeah, and thank you all for you know squeezing this in. I know we're you know, you had to adjust some of your schedules. So we'll, we'll get to the really good stuff quickly and so that everybody can get on to where they need to go. Um, so am I okay to start this meeting? As soon as, as soon as Rod, Rod oh, yeah. keeps coming in and back out. I don't know if okay. Rod are you there. That's okay. Okay. I think I'm here. Okay. You are there, we hear you. Thank Rod. you. So uh, the Seed School of Los Angeles, there's this huge glare, so it's hard for me to see. Um, the Seed School of Los Angeles County Board of Directors special meeting um, is called to order at 1.03 p.m. February 17th, 2022. Um, welcome all of you. I will, uh, we've already acknowledged that this is being recorded. Um, I will do a roll call and then I will uh, do the board finding. So we have, and you can just say here, um, Ruth Stalford here, Jackie Kimbrough here, Jennifer Price Lesher here, Rod Hamilton here. Okay, we have quorum with the board, and joining us, of course, is Jillian Juman, Leslie Poole, Kyle Goss, Alaire Tetralt, and Nilora Bell. Am I missing anybody? Nope, that's all on my screen. Okay, so while we are still doing this remotely, um, the board finds that our board of directors in accordance with government code section 54953E1B uh, has, de has uh, decided that meeting in person would present imminent risks to the health and safety of attendees and pursuant to government code section 54953E3. The board has also reconsidered the circumstances of the state of emergency declared by the governor on March 4th, 2020, and finds that the state of emergency continues to direct, directly impact the ability of our board of directors to meet safely in person, and that state and local officials continue to impose or recommend measures to promote social distancing. So with that being said, we can move to the next item. Approval of minutes. Yield. Okay, so the minutes were circulated. The uh, the minutes from Tuesday, January twenty fifth, twenty twenty two. Um, ha, does anyone have any edits, changes, anything? I move we adopt the minutes. A second, Jackie. Great. We'll do an official vote. All those in favor say aye. Ruth Stalford, aye. Jen Price Lesher. Aye. Jackie Rod Kimbrough, Hamilton. aye. Perfect. And Rod Hamilton. Oh, and I see Sophia's joining us. Yes, aye. Oh, perfect. All right. Minutes are passed unanimously. Welcome. All right. So we can move right into what we need to move into, Jillian. Awesome. So just to acknowledge, we're going to move down to the closer to the bottom where we have the material revision, just so that we make sure we have quorum and everyone is here. So ultimately around the material revision we talked about last month, um, this is kind of a, a standard process when you change uh, location uh, for any period of time, whether it is a month, two months, a year or longer, we're just asking for a year material revision with LACO. Um, so the uh, vote today is around, uh, are we okay with the materials we're sending? Are we being thoughtful around our community and, and the students we're serving, the families that we're serving? And particularly, are we representing that in the documents that we're sending? So that's the vote uh, for today. But I just wanna go over each one so that if there's any questions, any thoughts, uh, you can lift them up, including uh, the certificate of occupancy, which I'm gonna talk about in just a minute. Did everybody have a chance to kind of read through or at least skim through a little bit? Okay, awesome. Well, that makes that help. That's helpful. So the first one, the material revision request, that's the initial request that's gonna to go to the superintendent at outlays, just kind of the why, why we need a material revision, why we need to space for a year. And it's just a year, we promise, right? We're saying that very clearly in there. 
Um, it also really gets clear about the documents we're associating there, uh, things that we need to change and adopt and change around the red line charter, but then also the things that we're just including that we uh, that they don't have access to yet, like the lease, for example. Um, is there any questions or any in-depth things that we should talk about around the request for the material revision? That's document number one. Um, it's not, I know it's not a necessary part of the process uh, in, um, in as much as you know, the, the charter and notifying people who need to be notified about our needs and, and whatnot. However, uh, speaking from experience, because that's a weird thing that I get to say in this meeting, um, I just wanted to make sure that eventually when we have the students and we are occupying the space um, at AJU, that there is some type of um, meeting or, or notes or something uh, with the students and their families explaining why we're at that space, what the expectations are for students in that space, what the expectations are for anybody we're sharing the space with, um, having shared space at Children's Museum in DC and uh, Trinity College and Catholic University and the various sites that I've been at as a student. I would have preferred a lot more guidance about why that was happening. Um, I just want to make sure that students and families are not being kept in the dark. Not, not that we are keeping them in the dark, um, but just you know to, to be as transparent with students and families as possible about the process and how it works and why it's happening. Um, so I, I understand this is not exactly the time, so that's all I'm going to say, but I just want to hope, I just want to make sure that it's being said and, and we can come back to it and do something about it. So all families, I, I appreciate you lifting that up, right? It's about making sure everyone's aware we're carrying everybody right towards the goal. Um, and then there's a second piece that you're really mentioning, which is kind of the community that's a surrounding AJU. And then also kind of how do we live and work together? And I think that's a really valid point. Um, I think the second one lives out of the material revision around how are we doing new student orientation? How are we thinking about kind of bridging some of the communication, even having some of the rabbis speak to our students so it feels comfortable? So I think that can be built in. I think that's a lovely lift up. Um, families right now, uh, and you're gonna hear in a minute, we have uh, 63 families uh, who have decided to apply. Um, all of them know about AJU and we're very excited about it uh, because it felt like it mirrors the same permanent site uh, opportunities. It has a soccer field, it has separate dorms, it has all the things that feel good. The only question they lifted up was, are you still gonna offer transportation? Um, and what I said was that's built into the model, of course we are. Um, and so you'll see that a little bit in the budget as well. We are putting a little bit of monies towards uh, making sure we have additional transportation because students are coming from South LA, they may have needed transportation if we were at our permanent site or they may not have. And so we're making a, an assumption that we'll need one or two more vans than we normally have. Um, but the budget also says, because we have a lot of the resources baked into the lease, we have some extra monies that we can use and apply there. So there's no uh, monies being removed from other places in the budget. Sophia, is that helpful or more information? Yes, that is, thank you. And I also appreciate the additional information about transportation for students. That's awesome, yeah, thanks. Absolutely. But I, I, want us, I want us to keep talking about that second part, which is how do we make sure we acclimate to a community, which I think is powerful. Moving into the red line charter petition, um, there wasn't a lot of changes in the charter petition, right? Um, there was some, uh, I, I would say, kind of language changes and kind of updates around policies, particularly around uh, kind of meal plans that was also updated in there. But in general, we were kind of, we were looking pretty good. Um, so is there any questions around the charter petition in itself or some of the red line? Okay. Um, and then uh, I wanted to go into the lease agreement we have seen before, so I'm gonna speed through that unless you kind of say we need to talk more about it. Uh, bylaws, we have seen the budget narrative uh, should match a little bit what I just said, which is we're looking pretty good because we've been very thoughtful around the lease and what's included in the lease. Um, I wanna pause there and then I wanna hover a little bit around the certificate of occupancy. Is there any questions around the narrative? Um, hopefully it aligns to stuff we've talked about, you've seen the budget before, but any questions? All right, looks like we're looking good. 
So last thing around certificate of occupancy. So we have two, uh, we found five online for AJU, but the two, uh, the recent one is the one I posted on here uh, and one that we're talking with LACO about. Uh, it also mirrors with uh, another one that they have from the 1960s that allows for students that are uh, in the high school or middle school years uh, under, the, under the number of 200 at a time. And so what we're gonna ask LACO to do is to help us either get an E certificate, right? So that we're ready to move forward. You usually have to have an E on there, right? Some of us saw the email from Anita, uh, that's accurate. It should have occupancy E, um, but there's also waivers around uh, other kinds of uh, occupancies uh, that list high school students. So we're gonna look for a waiver there, but that's a little bit where we're there, wh where we are. I'm going to submit the one that LACO recommends us to whether we submit the one from 1960s and this one, or we uh, go through a process uh, to make sure we have the E on there. So oh, is the uh, question, is the E, are we asking for a waiver from LACO to operate at AJU? Okay, got it, that's all. Yeah, <laughs> and they could come back and say, we're not gonna help you. And then that's a bigger, bigger thing. And then we have to go through a process uh, and possibly ask for more support around that because we do have the occupancy. It just doesn't have the E for education. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that's the circle around, but I think right now we're in a place where we have a good argument that this is a safe place. We have clear uh, documentation that it has been um, audited and reviewed on a bi-yearly basis. So um, that's kind of the move there. Right, and the, the usage is for education purposes so. It just says on the it says on there that it's for above high school grades and mm -hmm. unless there's under 200 and it doesn't specify the amount of time. So that's where we can have a little. Yeah. Right. I little gotcha. yeah. Um, so that's where we are. Any thoughts, questions or things that we should consider in addition to the things that we've kind of talked about and been very thoughtful about? What is the timeline? So how does this work? So I know they come and they do a. a inspection or you know whatever it's called they come and do that but are, they're probably are they related or are they not are these all happening independently how does it work i would say that they're friends but they're not necessarily uh relating on each other I, there is uh, a feeling around if we have all of our ducks in a row it just moves the process faster so i have lined it up so that we're in that place i'm hoping to submit everything by the 28th uh, and just kind of send it in. And then they have the 30 days, 30 to 60 days to respond to it. Uh, they bring it to their board. Um, so that's kind of the process I'm, I'm thinking about. If the occupancy takes a little bit longer or there's more additional things that they need, I'll take guidance from LACO on kind of next steps and I'll circle back to this group. Okay. So uh, I would love to kind of swing it back to um, Ruth for a vote. If everyone's comfortable and feels like there are questions have been answered and feel confident in what's being submitted. But, Thanks. Mm -hmm. All right. So then motion to approve this. Sub I bring a motion to the floor to approve the submission of CDLA's material revision to the chart to the charter request and the supporting documentation, which includes an updated charter petition, the certificate of occupancy lease agreement, and our approved budget with a narrative. Now, the second, second motion. Motion. Rod. Okay. Rod seconds. <laughs> All those in favor say aye. I'll just do a poll, you guys. Ruth Stalford, aye. Jackie Kimbrough, aye. Jen Price Lesher, aye. Sophia Echeverria, aye. Rod Hamilton. Aye. The motion is passed to approve the submission of CDLA's material revision. Thanks everyone. I'll Thank let you, you know where we are. So I think what we're doing is we're gonna go right back to the top of the agenda and hope we hold on to as many people as we possibly can. So we're just gonna kind of muscle through. Is that right, Ruth? Okay. So temporary site update, did you wanna start, start with that? With that? Yes. So, um, the, and I don't know if anyone else on, on this call has any additional updates, but um, so we, you know, we're still planning to move into our temporary site. Um, I have talked to AJU and their plan is um, to remain at the same staffing levels at, as they currently are in terms of security and all of those things. Um, 
you know, until something changes, right? So they are for sale. We know that. Um, our lease is um, solid. We have language that I will share out to you all. Um, and it is also AJU's intention to, you know, completely comply with this lease, but it is baked into our lease, it's, as everyone will see. Um, and uh, they're really excited to have us. And I'm trying, they are still planning, you know, Laura, they are still planning to do beef, you know, to be the food service authority. And they have actually met with some other food providers. I'm, I think they're probably in contact with you about that. So that is sort of my, that's, that's my update related to the temporary side. I don't know if anyone else has anything they want to share. Someone might. I'll add the walkthrough. So we did a quick walkthrough to prepare for the walkthrough because I didn't want any surprises. Um, the academic building looked very good. We had, um, we're just adding fire extinguishers to every classroom and that's actually going up tomorrow. Uh, and then we're adding uh, like updated first aid kits just because they were expired. So that's a good, good scene. Uh, residential halls, there was just peeling of wallpaper, uh, which is an asbestos flag. So we're taping those up. Uh, and having folks come in to kind of make sure it's secure before the walkthrough. So that's my only quick update around the walkthrough. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna move into student recruitment if that's okay. Just pause me if I'm, oh, go ahead, Jen. Quick question. Um, the taping up of the wallpaper, is, is it more than just light tape? Is it permanent so kids will be safe? Okay, good. Yeah, we have, there's two of them. So we actually have the permanent tape so kids will be safe. Okay. And then for the ones that they don't have, uh, they won't be able to reach until the summer. We're doing um, blue tape to market so that Lake is aware. Great, okay, thank you. Yeah, no, that's a good question. It's not the, yeah. Um, a quick student recruitment update. Uh, so as mentioned or uh, before, we're at 63 for applicants. Uh, 37 uh, have selected the boys dorm. 26 have selected the girls dorm. Um, we moved from having 90% boys and 10% girls. I got a little sweaty there for a little bit, guys. Um, and uh, we did a big push around it. So no, now we're at 60, 40. Um, so that's kind of, that's an, a better place to be in. Um, Watts, uh, we've had some real success around Watts Gang Force has done some good work with us. So we've had some students come in from Watts. Uh, we've had a really nice partnership, as some of you guys might know, uh, KIPP has had for a long time uh, partnerships throughout Los Angeles. And so they're really thinking about equity and they're thinking about kind of how to think about school differently. And so we have a nice partnership with them. So we've had a, a great deal of KIPPers apply for us. Um, that's what they call themselves, KIPPers. Um, Metro, Metro families have signed up, which is kind of cool. And then there's been a combination of social media. Uh, we've really powered that up a little bit. We gave it a boost as well as some media coverage, which I hopefully you have seen. And Ruth has been working a great deal on. Um, we have about 57 students coming from Vermont Vista, Lamert Park, uh, South LA, mostly Vermont Square area uh, and Watts area. And uh, we have six students uh, coming from either Palmdale, Whittier, uh, San Fernando Valley. So we're kind of moving on out. Um, Long Beach, Pico Rivera and Playa, uh, Playa del Rey. So uh, we're, our word's just kind of getting out there. I think that's kind of what we've been seeing. Um, an exciting thing is that Community Build has really partnered with us. They've set aside some monies to uh, pay organizations to outreach around recruitment. Uh, and really support in that way, including our March 5th event. So I'm, uh, flyers coming out today. Um, the March 5th event is uh, hopefully eighth grade families will come and get food and learn about science um, and STEM. Uh, and so there'll be nice activities. There's gonna be puppeteering happening. Um, so that's fun uh, and some opportunities to learn. So a flyer is coming out today to you. So see that, please share it. Uh, if you are available on the 5th, please come on out. Um, that would be lovely. It's being supported by the Children's Institute Community Build, as I mentioned. Uh, faith communities are uh, really supporting the efforts, um, the supervisor, and then Vermont Village. So um, some, some real support happening um, around the event. And it's going to be our first in-person, which we have not done before. So I'm a little nervous. It's kind of like planning a party and then no one co uh, shows up. So it's feeling a little bit like that. So I'm hoping people show up, even if it's just you, please be there. Um, so I'm gonna pause and I have a question around enrollment, but any questions around that data drop? 
or any thoughts? Jillian, I think it's really encouraging to see the uptick um, of applications. Um, I think I think it's a really good sign and um, good work, great work actually. I think it's it's teamwork. I think we've all been crunching, right? So I really appreciate all of it. I think where uh, my question for today is around what should we do around enrollment? So right now, um, I'm excited also about the uptick. I also know that many of the students by this point in the year have many applications out or have selected to go to another school and applied to us anyways, which that also could happen. Um, and so our lottery is at the end of March, uh, which is fine. So we can wait there and kind of see and, and pull names and see who moves into enrollment. What a lot of schools are doing right now, kind of the pulse, is they're moving up their lottery time. So they're kind of saying, we're doing lottery between these few months or these few weeks to pull people in sooner and faster. So one thing we could do, and I'm not saying I recommend it, I actually have no stake in the ground either way. Uh, one thing we could do is move up our lottery next week, take all the kids we can and kind of push it that way, and then do another lottery in March so that we kind of draw kids into enrollment as we're moving. The good side about that is it creates some urgency, right? Let's get going. Let's actually see where our numbers are. The downside of that, it feels like it's playing lottery or, you know, playing like gambling a little bit, which I don't gamble for, for many reasons. But um, it feels like if we have a burst of kids that apply in the next few, few weeks and they're kids that really need seed LA, we're also in a place where we just took students and maybe they really needed it and maybe, right? Like the, I think it puts us in a place where we could uh, deny some students who really need it possibly. Um, on the flip side, we could also end up doing that if we lose a bunch of kids. So I wanted to throw that out there to just see what the temperature was and kind of how we feel about that, whether we should move more urgently or just kind of stick with the plan. Um, would love to hear some thoughts for a couple of minutes just to inform the thinking. I go back and forth. Um, my, my thought is to stick with the plan, knowing that we are, we have a lot of media stuff. Come, we have a lot of marketing and media happening, right? Yeah. Um, and that doesn't prevent us from having a second lottery or a, another opportunity after, right? Cause I, you know, I'm hearing what you're saying. I, I really want us to make sure we are giving the opportunity to those that really will most benefit from this. Um, so that is just, and, and I do think um, we are gonna, you know, we'll have a, a lot more visibility in the next few weeks. I mean, we're already, the trend is already, the trend line is really good. Mm -hmm. So um, I'm, you know, I think stay the course is kind of my feeling, but. And what we could do is after that, we could just start intaking, right? Legally, from a legal standpoint, we can just do that. Um, so fair. Any other, thanks Ruth, any other thoughts to that or an agreement or another perspective? I agree with Ruth, <clears throat> oh, excuse me. I agree with Ruth. Um, I think that we should be giving ourselves as much time as we can. Mm -hmm. um, and um, there could be unforeseen things that could crop up. And if we give ourselves the time, it'll be good to know that well, we might be able to handle whatever things are uh, to handle them better than if we were to move things up. Mm -hmm. So that's my feeling. Yep, I got it. I saw some thumbs up. Um, okay. All right, perfect. Thank you. I just want to make sure I'm bringing it to us. So we're having a candid conversation around choices. Um, so appreciate the feedback there. So Ruth, the date. So the Go date on. for the lottery, the date for the lottery is now when? March 25th. Okay. So it's in a few weeks. Yeah. Six weeks. Are you okay with that, Rod? Or do you have another thought? No, I guess I'd be inclined to stay the course. Um, you know, I was nervous about enrollment. I, I think the surge is good. Um, and with the story of more media coming on, um, it probably makes sense to stay the course as opposed to acting desperately. We have a lot of time to get desperate, so I'd stay the course. <laughs> we'll wait till June to get desperate. That sounds good. 
I okay. That, Jillian, I think the other thing I would say, because I, like you bring up a really good point, right? About like making sure that the, the right fit. Um, I think in every school we've had a conversation similar to this at this point. And I think we just had to trust the process, right? Like I think we have like the ability to always say to families, we followed our process. We did a lottery. Like we didn't, you know, we did everything we could to get the word out. We did everything we could to remove barriers. And then we did, we followed our process. I think being able to always say that has just been really um, a benefit. Um, and I think the other opportunity is that to your other point, like we can do a lottery on March the 25th, but we literally, um, like we can enroll, we can keep taking applications, right? And we're going to see some families come the new student orientation who are going to say, I'm not coming and we're going to go over there. Right. Mm -hmm. And so we have an opportunity to pull so we can we can keep recruiting. We can follow the stay the course, keep recruiting and um, give opportunity as opportunity opens up. Yep. Hi, Jennifer. Thank you. Um, totally great. And, and I hope that you appreciate that I brought it here, um, so that we're making a decision together. So great. I'm, I'm happy and I'll keep you guys updated as we move forward on recruitment. Ruth, do you have anything to add on recruitment or media or anything? I can give a quick little media update. Okay. Um, so, I mean, a lot of you've seen, uh, we've emailed some of this out, but, um, so, you know, uh, Jillian did a piece on KBLA, uh, back in January. Um, we have been stepping up our game a little bit here. We got a press release out and some outlets just picked it up without any um, outreach from Deanna, who's been helping us with this, Deanna Rubio. Um, but we also got uh, Daily News ran a story. Mm -hmm. Did someone, oh, okay. Daily News ran a piece and they have a they have huge circulation. KCRW and KNX also ran stories um, and KCRW is going to do another, has already recorded another interview, a much more, you know, longer interview with a Jillian that they are probably going to run first week of March. Um, we had a really strong piece with, uh, with Univision. It was a two minute story, which is like a hundred thousand dollars worth of free media for us. And it was one of those really phenomenal, like last second rally, Jillian pulled, pulled Kimberly out of the hat to get, to jump in and do an interview with like an hour's notice. Um, and Kimberly was phenomenal. And Deanna ran down to the site and she did some interview, you know, she was part of the interview. And what was really nice that came out of it was not only was the story really good, but um, Univision really is excited about this and has said they want to stay in touch with us and they will continue to cover us. And that's uh, a great market uh, for us to make sure that we're getting into. Um, PBS, there is a more in-depth story uh, in the works. I think we'll have more about that at the end of the week because I know Deanna was having uh, discussions with them. She's working with La Opinion and Telemundo as well. And um, we have our commercial that's a, we'll start airing soon, I think, right? So we've delivered the commercial. We will send you all of these pieces in a file. So you can all look at that. We've been collecting the clips so everyone can see it in one place. Um, and then we're also working to invite press to the event on the 5th. I need to talk to you, Jillian, about some more information about the particulars about what's happening there because we have to put that in our media alert. And um, I think that's, that's the, it's exciting. It's, you know, really getting out there. It is exciting. And there's some synergy that you're feeling across um, LA and the conversations we're having. So it's cool. I imagine you're all smiling and happy. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Um, yes. Thank you. Good. Oh, right, Sophia, thank you. Um, so <laughs> moving to uh, Valor Campus, Compass Camp is just a quickie. So I don't know if you remember in the fall, we talked about uh, really deepening socio-emotional learning for CLA students. And we talked about circle work and we talked about uh, there's a partnership. And, and in my interview, I talked about uh, Valor. I've partnered with them in various different settings. They cover 75% of the bill and we cover 25%. Um, and they do coaching, they develop staff, they develop students. 
Uh, it's very comprehensive and it's amazing. So over the last few months, I've been going through the interview process with them. It started out in December uh, with just a training. And then I've been writing essays about CLA, th those kinds of things over the last few months. It's a very rigorous process for, and rightfully so, it's a grant. Um, and so they just contacted me a couple of days ago and said that CLA is being given this three-year opportunity. Um, so what I'd like to do is uh, once I have more information of what that looks like and uh, kind of what how we can get involved specifically, I'll send it out to everyone. Um, but I will send out a video so you can see the impact it has on communities. And you can look up Valor Collegiate. Um, it's, it's some of the best work I have seen around socio-emotional learning and bridging it into the academic program, which I think is something that we can kind of enhance and also give to the Seed Foundation as, as kind of a model, an exemplar of uh, social emotional learning, but also in Los Angeles. Um, so I'm really excited about this work, and I think it will be uh, it will put us a little bit above above the rest in many ways. Um, any any thoughts, questions? Do you guys remember when we talked about it a little bit in in the winter? Okay, so it's not totally foreign. Great. So yay, that's also exciting. Yeah, it's good stuff. Thank you. Absolutely. More to come, and I'm going to pass it over to Kyle. Thank you. Uh, all right, so I, I'm talking about the, this, what is called expense report on the agenda. Uh, I put some together pretty quickly before Jillian sent out the agenda, and then I, I didn't like the format, so I actually tweaked a few things, and I'm going to share my screen. I know some folks might not be in front of a good screen, so I'll try to talk through this. Um, oh. Who's um, it's the same information, just different format. Yeah, based, it, it's I added one subtraction column basically. So um, can I share? Okay, there it is. All right. So the first thing I want to say, like some of this looks at what the actual expenditures are. There's some contractually committed funds. And then there's a column that basically shows like what's left from the budget. And I just want to be clear that like we have a budget for a reason. You know, there's some staffing lines in here that aren't hired yet that Jillian's planning on filling, right? And, and so I don't mean to present this as like these funds are can be moved around. But uh, so I just want to run through this real quickly. So the first up here at the top, you're going to see the budget in this left column, how much we've spent as of January 31st in this column, year-to-date actuals, committed, which is a loose kind of, I did my best here, but like the biggest ones here are like the seed expense reimbursement, seed foundation expense reimbursement, XED, and other grant funds that we know are coming. And then this last column is basically the difference between what we spent and or know we've signed on the dotted line for and the budget. Uh, and so like what, what the gaps are. Um, and so if we start at revenue, we basically have 300,000 uh, we, I think that we had talked briefly about that, that is not committed, that we have built into our grants, uh, grants line. So our revenue, if nothing else came in, we would be $300,000 short of our kind of budgeted revenue. All right, so that's pretty close already. Um, so so it'd, be, it'd be nice if we hit that, but, but that's where we are. Uh, and so I just, I wanna focus on expenses and I haven't, again, the only salary I put in here is committed is uh, the head of school. And I don't think that's an accurate presentation here. So, but like if an emergency struck or whatever, like the, the and it was just Jillian through the end of the year, which is, I don't think anybody's like you would have about, um, so this is roughly 300,000, a little over plus benefits um, remaining that, that isn't kind of basically currently going out to, to a person. Um, Supplies, we have some, some funds there, about 50,000. We have, um, and, and I, I don't wanna go through each of these lines, but like advertisement and recruitment, which is the bit, one of the bigger lines is about 130,000 remaining. This contractual line, which was 1.5 million of the budget, or all other consultants is basically all spent because that's the majority of that is XED and the Seed Foundation. So you can see we only have 25,000 remaining once I pull all that out. Um, and the, the moral of the story is there are 600,000 in expenses, not currently kind of 
out the door already, including that those salary lines, which I know a lot of those are like having an ops manager start soon. And like, I mean, those are critical pieces, obviously, but, but 300 on the revenue side, that's not committed it in yet. And then 600 expenses that are not spent yet. Although, you know, I'm, that was January 31st and, and um, things are moving, but so that's, that's my expense update. Um, and I know some folks are probably not in front of a screen and, and I'm happy to entertain any questions here or try to reformat and, and repackage and send around if that's helpful. So I'll stop there for any questions. Thank you, Kyle. This is really helpful to see it this way. I have a question. Um, what is in advertising? Just give me some examples of what is in ad ad advertisement and recruitment, obviously the paying for the NBC contract. I understand that, but are, is that, does that include all of the, um, I would say, yeah, go ahead. I was gonna jump. So it's, um, I have it more broken down on my side on some of the work. I think that is including some other numbers though, that maybe have less to do with, I'm, I'm curious about the large number there, but uh, it has translation services in there. It has, um, you know, printing of materials. It has, it has, uh, what else does it have Kyle? Printing, yeah. translation. You, you bought me enough time to pull it up. I think okay. yeah. uh, <laughs> almost. Uh, all right. So Travel slash family home visits, 25,000, 70,000. I mean, some of these are pretty general. 70,000 outreach to families through social media slash materials. Events for community and families, 25,000. Student orientation event, um, 50,000. And I actually moved a little bit of money out of this line to um, offset you know, things that we just, that are clearly for recruitment, but we booked another more specific lines like postage and things like that. But yeah. You know, it's 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 kind of all sorts of different recruitment um, activities. Great, thank you. And then the okay, so all other consultants, and so some of the the hires you've made, um, the assistant Terrell, where are those guys? You know, they're not really on here right now. We only we paid out five, like we paid out like a little bit in January. So they will likely they're going to come out of this up. I don't know if you can see like, sorry, it's not highlighting, but basically these top three lines, certificated classified and benefits, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000. That's where I, and, and Jillian, correct me if, you're, if I'm wrong, but my, my sense is all of those and some of the kind of contracted support around kind of hiring and some of that, like that's basically where we're drawing from in the budget to, to fund those things. Um, uh, yeah, and so, right, so example would be, we wanted to have an HR manager by now. We don't have one. So we're using a con somebody that we've contracted with until we can actually hire someone. So that's an example. So it's been those kind of trades. And but that would be coming out of those buckets right there. The, con the person that you're, you, you didn't hire the full-time person you wanted to hire, but the person that you're paying as a consultant, that's coming out of there, right? Correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and we're just like, I think I've only paid a couple of invoices there. So we're kind of, it's not really reflected yet in, in this, like if we have to shift things around, it hasn't been done yet, but, but that's, that's the plan. Uh, and I, I should just note because, and this, this thing gets a little complicated, but I do just want to note, note this. I stuck it in this line. It's really not part of operating expense, but just for an accounting reason, anytime we are giving money to facilities, it flows through this budget. So there's, there's some, um, some money that we gave at the beginning of the year was actually received prior year that was already booked 544,000. Uh, this we, we do receive some interest revenue from leverage loans in excess of our interest expense. And my understanding is that's been fully committed to the facility project. And so you see that going out here. That's part of this 542,000 that's leaving. And one other piece of that is a, is a portion of funds that I had originally errantly booked as straight revenue without an expense from Jacobs, 150K that I needed to show leaving. And that's why this this line is 150,000 more than budget because I didn't show that when we passed the budget 
a couple months ago or a month ago, whatever that was. Um, but you're going to see, I got advice from the accounts. Basically, there's I need to show this revenue flowing through there. So it's going to inflate both the revenue and expense going forward. Um, but it, it just passing through, basically. Thank you. That's all I had. Before I move into our last item, is there any questions or thoughts around um, the expense report? Or what are you calling it? I call it expense, but what yeah, do you call it? It's basically, I would say, a budget to actual report. Um, okay. I think, I think, I mean, any feedback is certainly welcome. I mean, I think we have, we just <laughs> passed this budget. And so I think it's helpful to look at this to kind of get folks acclimated to what, what the budget looks like. Um, but any formatting tweaks, I think hopefully this is better than what I attached originally, but uh, I was moving a little fast earlier this week. So, so sorry about that. Yeah, Jillian and Kyle or Jillian even, um, no questions today. I'd actually like to see the detail month to month and then a forecast um, through the end of the fiscal year, particularly as we start trying to focus some of our fundraising for the next five months. And so um, it would be really helpful um, for me in short order to actually understand like, like the details and then where, you know, just where we see the opportunity and the risk um, between now and June 30th. <clears throat> that makes sense. Thanks. Um, <clears throat> awesome. So. Moving into our, thank, thanks Kyle for putting that together. Um, moving to our last piece uh, is the uh, board meetings for the spring semester. Um, so I don't, do you wanna start Ruth or can I just jump in? Go ahead, okay. Um, so as we're kind of going into like, I'm just gonna say like opening a new school is a thing, right? It's, it's, a, it's a meaty thing. And so um, the request is to, we're gonna have to increase meetings um, and I, I wish I could call it a different word. When I say meetings, everybody cringes. I, I certainly do. But I would love some uh, more opportunities and touch points so that we can move faster on items. I'm going to share in a minute uh, the things that are coming up this spring. If you've been on a school board, you know that spring is just uh, its own beast by itself. Uh, but particularly when we're opening a, a new school, there's a lot of things we need to vote on, we need, we need to discuss. Um, so after this meeting, I'm hoping to send out a doodle so that we can kind of sit down and, and talk a little bit about those items. But this is just a brief uh, share. So uh, we have budget modeling coming up uh, and just budgeting. Um, LCAP, uh, which is our goals for the year and setting it around the budget is coming up. Uh, calendar for the year, uh, we have COVID student staff site policies uh, that should come from the board. Uh, course, offering, course offerings, graduation requirements, it comes to the board, uh, bell schedules, student assessments and academic calendars, curriculum uh, and facilities master plan. So, and this is just some, and then we have the other stuff that we uh, regularly talk about and need to talk about. So um, I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up and share that we're sending out the doodle for this reason only. I know that everybody's crunched and, um, it's a lot of time, and particularly during a time that every everything requires a lot of time. So it, it would look like a meeting. We have a meeting in March. Um, we would be adding a meeting in April, and it would be probably a meaty one. Uh, and again, adding a meeting in May that's actually pretty meaty. I would also recommend we probably throw in a retreat at some point. I'm looking at, re, at Ruth. <clears throat> it might be a good idea to uh, do some kind of some strategy planning and thinking as we move forward. So that's just an idea. I, I haven't uh, done anything with that, but that's my recommendation there. Um, before we send out the doodles, are there any concerns around increased time? Uh, I know it's an ask. Any You're feelings? Rod, 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 I'll go ahead. Rod. You know, I'm overseeing uh, probably. 20 construction projects. We have weekly project meetings and I can't make them all. Zoom helps me make a bunch of them. Um, but I would think, um, I would almost set it up as every other week, uh, mm -hmm. an hour, uh, mm -hmm. and maybe it doesn't take an hour, maybe it's 45 minutes and you give people 15 minutes back. But I think keeping up with 
these current events as you're going through your heavy lift might be uh, the best way for people to stay plugged in and to give you uh, the, the support you need through this period. I am in love with that idea. How are, Jackie, are you okay with that? Ruth, are you okay with that? No, I think it's great. And I wonder if we can help target a window that's, that's, you know, I know it's hard with everybody's schedule, but maybe there is this one hour that seems to be the one hour that's pretty good for everybody, right? Well, Ruth, I'm yeah, glad you asked that. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Ron. And if it's set, then people can plan around that. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad you asked about the timing because for me, one to three in the afternoon, is probably the worst time. Mm -hmm. We've done some at eight in the morning, eight to nine, eight to 10, some at nine and 10. So an hour at eight o'clock or an hour at nine o'clock okay. works for me. I'm not sure if it works for Rod, if he's looking at construction sites, because I know you guys work early or they work early, but mm -hmm. one to three is when everybody in the office is trying to get documents out and needing a signature or a review or something mm -hmm. to get in the mail, so. The, the, the other time that works for me is late afternoon four o'clock because generally construction people want to be uh in their jacuzzis by by four o'clock so that's the life that sounds like great that sounds great uh was four o'clock for you um jackie or no and ruth i can't make four to five okay uh, uh, and, i just want to yeah sophia mm -hmm. sorry i just wanted to really quickly let y'all know that um i am slated for jury duty at the mm. beginning of march first week of march so right so it's a whole i have no idea how long that is going to take um i don't know if i'm going to get dismissed or be on a case or whatever uh so just a, a heads up that that is happening hopefully it will be dealt with before the lottery um but i just i thought i guess this is the time to let y'all know that that's happening and in addition to that um march and april are tough months for for my job uh, there's any number of weird projects that I could be assigned to um, as production ramps up. Um, so I will always try to make any meeting if I can make it. Um, but unfortunately, because it is production, um, work will have to take precedence. So I will always let y'all, I will always inform y'all as soon as I know uh, in regards to what I can and can't commit to. So just a heads up about this season for me personally. Sorry about jury duty. Um, I'm not, you. but I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, thanks for the heads up. So what I can do is we'll send out a doodle where it has kind of like, uh, you know, chunks of time that kind of work for you in general, and then just get some consensus. And then from there, we'll just book, um, if it's okay with everybody here, a biweekly cadence, and then just stick with it. Is that cool? Okay. Mm -hmm. Love it. I vote for Friday at eight. Friday at eight. <laughs> Friday at eight. It might be. That's no. We don't have a. We have a standing meeting. Oh, that's Friday. Friday. Eight. Is no, it Friday eight thirty? Maybe eight thirty. Is our meeting eight to eight thirty? I can't remember what time the meeting. We're never off that call in thirty I minutes. No, I feel okay, like. Let's, okay, let's. Okay, we'll do the doodle. We'll do the doodle. Okay, we'll doodle it out and figure it out. Thank you so much for being flexible. And I love that idea. It it's a lot of relief. So appreciate it. Um, I'm going to toss it back to Ruth to close us out for today. Yeah, we are going to, because we are going to run out of time and I know people need to go. Um, mm -hmm. We have on our agenda, the closed session, which we uh, will not be doing today. Um, so there's nothing for me to report out because we didn't have a closed session. Um, and uh, just keep a lookout for the doodle polls. I will, we will send you all of our clips that, so you can see, have a look at those. And um, you, know, you know where to find us. Thank you so much for doing all of these things on short notice. And I know Jackie in particular, you really had to move things around. So we really appreciate that. That's good meeting, thank you. Yeah, no, we appreciate it. So, and thank you all for, you know, preparing all of these documents and everything we needed to look at and all the work everyone's putting into getting us where we need to be. So it is 151, the SEED School of Los Angeles County Board of Directors special meeting, February 17th, 2022. Did I say 151? It's officially adjourned. <laughs> so, thank you, Alaire. I hope you feel better. Thank you. <laughs> okay.